Now then, after tragically losing his wife Gemma 18 months ago, for the past few weeks, Simon Thomas has been taking part in a series of outdoor activities, all designed to help improve your mental health. Well, today is the final instalment of his pursuit of happiness. Simon's finding his feet with the help of some four-legged friends. In this series, I have travelled the length and breadth of the country for my pursuits of happiness. Vulnerability. Oh, that's gorgeous. Exploring alternative outdoor therapies for mental illness. And today I'm returning to my home county of Norfolk to see how our four-legged friends can have an overwhelmingly positive impact on our well-being. I think we can all agree that when it comes to mental health, animals can be an absolute godsend. They offer you that unconditional love, companionship and support. Today I'm finding out about a form of therapy that uses that special bond to make a big difference. I'm visiting Squirrelwood Equestrian Centre to learn about equine facilitated psychotherapy which uses horses as part of the therapeutic process. Sarah, what does this kind of therapy actually involve? We work with clients with mental health issues and different presenting problems, um, addiction, trauma, and we work with them using the horses to help them overcome those issues. Our work is all on the ground, so it's all about handling the horses, um, and it gives, it's a very experiential therapy, so it gives you a space and an opportunity to connect with nature, connect with animals, um, and experience a very different type of therapy. And what are the positive impacts that, that horses have on people who are struggling with mental health issues? Particularly for clients who really struggle in a, in a room-based traditional therapy environment, they can really benefit from having the horse there to support them through that therapeutic process. Um, in a room-based environment, it's quite intimidating and there's the sort of the power dynamic that goes on yeah. between the client and the therapist. So as you can see in, in the activity that's going on, they, the therapist is stood back, the therapist isn't engaged, the whole process goes on between the client and the horses, mm. And as they build that relationship, then the therapist can get involved and help the client move through those emotions or mental health difficulties. One person who has certainly felt the positive impact of equine therapy is 28-year-old Alex. Alex, tell me a little bit about your story and some of the things you struggled with. Um, so for many years, I've really suffered with depression mm. and anxiety. Um, and a lot of trauma as a child that, you know, contributed to that. I've kind of gone through all different types of therapy, really. Tried them all? Tried them all, different medications. Some of them helped a bit, but none of them really have helped me, like the equine therapy. It takes a while to build up trust with the therapist and, mm. um, you know, I kind of learnt very early on that I can't trust humans <laughs> yeah, because of things that, um, that happened. It's helped me kind of feel a sense of like calmness as well, whereas a lot of my life's been quite chaotic. You know, a horse doesn't judge you and a horse accepts you for who you are. Mm. Such is the power of equine therapy that it is also being increasingly used to help children suffering with conditions such as autism and ADHD. Lisa Davis encourages a more hands-on approach in creating a special relationship with these majestic animals. They come here and they start to groom the ponies. It relaxes them. It teaches them how to integrate. A lot of these children here normally just worked by themselves, yeah. so they've all improved, they're all together. Their body language will reflect with the horse, so if they keep calm, like we've all got now, the yeah. horses stay calm as well. Why do you like William so much? Well, I like William because he is always sensible. Always sensible? Yeah, and he, ca and he always cares for others. Ah, uh, what, other horses or other people? Other people and horses. And he would he'd never want to hurt anyone. Ah. Uh, like a good pony. <laughs> My favourite pony. Why, why your favourite pony? She's just really, like, calm and lovely. Uh. And helped me, like, progress through the, like, sessions in horse riding. And after feeding, grooming and saddling the horses, now comes the really fun part, as the children are led to the paddock to ride their favourite ponies in a safe and controlled environment. 
and Lisa is seeing a huge improvement amongst the group. It helps them with coordination. It helps build up their confidence. Mm. They're all very fond of the horses, so it builds a really nice bond between them and the horses. There is one little boy that's riding at the moment um, who wouldn't even get out of the car, wouldn't even get out of the classroom. And now he's, he's on one of the ponies and he's riding. That's remarkable, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. When you've ridden other horses, yeah. when you're out and about, how, how do you feel? Happy. And I feel calm and happy. That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. Wow! Over the last few weeks, I've seen how simple outdoor pursuits can be beneficial to mental health. Whether it's spending time with animals, getting in touch with nature, or simply taking a cold outdoor dip. You know, everyone's individual struggles are different, and some of these activities may work for some, but not for others. But I think the most important point to take away from this is whether you struggle with depression, anxiety, grief, trauma, or any kind of mental illness, you are not alone. There is help all around you, and one small step could change your life. Thank you, Simon, Simon. very much. Very, very good. It's been a good series. It has been a really good series. And remember, on our app, there's always details of helplines or websites that you can get any more further help from.